what I want to have a stab at talking about today is the relationship between uh, body schema in the brain, uh, the relationship between body schema and experience, understanding and performance, and if I can find a way to get to this, to think about how that kind of an understanding of the relationship between body schema and uh, understanding performance and so on, how a great understanding of that might uh, enable us to construct strategies for um, enabling improved performance of various kinds or uh, improving understanding. Okay. Body schema, as I understand it, is not the same as body image. In fact, there's probably more than one body schema and there's probably more than one understanding of body image. Body image, I think, generally just refers to you know, how we kind of perceive ourselves, what kind of, uh, how we imagine ourselves to look as if we were looking from the outside, those kind of things. Body schema, and this is something that Gallagher talks about, body schema is, um, at least in the way that I'm thinking of it, is a schematic, dynamic representation uh, of the body, of its location in space, of the different locations of, it, of the elements of the body in space, of its movements through space, its relative movements, one part to another, uh, those kind of things. So it's my body schema that's telling me that I'm uh, standing still, that my hand is about a foot in front of my stomach, that my head is turned at a certain angle, that my uh, eyes are doing certain things. All that information, all sent from uh, sensors in my muscles and joints, accelerometers and um, stress sensors, all those kind of things. All that information is piling into my somatosensory cortex and kind of mapping itself uh, into the, that part of the brain so that there's a kind of um, representation, an ongoing representation of what my body is doing, where it is in space at all times. And it's a very fine-grained, I think, a very fine-grained map as well. Uh, so as I say, it would cover things like you know, the direction my eyes are pointing, the direction my head is pointing, what my hands and fingers are doing, uh, that kind of detail. Uh, Okay, so that, uh, that body, and there's a really nice uh, picture of it, I think it's called the Penfield homunculus, but I might be wrong. It was drawn up, I think, by Wilder Penfield, who was a neuroscientist in the 50s and 60s, something like that, I guess, maybe a bit later, who, uh, through, uh, through uh, examining patients on the operating table, was able to stimulate different parts of the brain across the sensory cortex and get them to report on what, where in their body they were feeling it and they discovered this kind of one-to-one -one mapping of the parts of the body onto a part of the brain so you can kind of draw what it looks like sort of it kind of wraps across the top of the brain if my memory serves me correctly so there's this weird kind of homunculus in the brain uh, the body up there in the mind and I'm borrowing from Mark Johnson with that idea the body and the mind uh, that acts as a kind of uh, phenomenological centre to our uh, understanding, a centre to our experience. It's next, that's the, uh, the experiencing organ, if you like. Uh, so what's the significance of that? So uh, in terms of the relationship between that homunculus, the body schema, and experience, all our experiences, the, the experience that I'm having right now looking up at this uh, microlight aircraft, uh, the completely embodied experience of you know, the position I'm standing, the, the angle I'm having to hold my neck to look up at that direction, the kind of tightening of the muscles around my eyes in order to be able to just reduce the glare a little because I'm looking up into the light. All those kinds of... Uh, train going back, new information. All that information is uh, it's not just uh, in the schema, it's also connecting the schema to the outside world, I think. So, so those, um, 
presumably the sight of that microlight aircraft is going into my eyes. It's being processed partly in the visual cortex and then sent off to the various different processing parts of the brain. And at some point it's related to that information is collated with the image, the body schema, such that you know, the sound, the sight of it, is kind of integrated into this whole by its, by its relationships to information, like, you know, the angle I'm holding my head, that kind of thing. Okay, so, so my experience in the world is partly constrained or produced by this body schematic uh, information. We have a dog coming here, so I may have to just pause on this one. <laughs> pause, dog. Um, I'll keep going for a minute. No, the dog's on the lead. It will definitely be a dog they would fight with. I'll come back.